So this is our coding lecture three, and basically um, today we're gonna what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna implement um, what's happening in class in uh, PyTorch. So basically, we wanna implement um, the forward pass and the back propagation. So. Um, um, in the class I taught like uh, two years ago, um, I implemented, I mean, the same thing, but uh, uh, for NumPy uh, right here. So uh, if, I mean, if you're interested in how uh, NumPy does it, you can uh, check this link. And, uh, but today, because we're using PyTorch, PyTorch actually has an a much, much more advanced uh, system. It's called AutoGrad, so which we'll uh, learn in the second half of uh, uh, today's lecture. So let's begin. So of course, first we have, um, of course, first we have um, these two. So we import NumPy and we import Torch. And we wanna, um, we wanna implement something uh, as the follow, let me let me shrink this a bit. So why not just do 500, okay. So this is a network uh, we like to implement uh, in our class. So for example, um, we have, this is a uh, uh, 10 uh, right here, okay. Um, and this, we have a hidden layer of uh, uh, dimension five. And lastly, this is our output layer, which has uh, uh, three neurons. So we have uh, um, like uh, 10 neurons in the input layer, um, five neurons in the um, hidden layer and the three neurons in the output layer, all right? So the first one, the first one right here, what I want to say about this is um, what we want to do is we want our result to be reproducible. So let me add a text above. So the following cell, okay, is about reproducibility. Um, by fixing the random number generation seed. What does this mean is because every time and most of the time we'll be generate random numbers using the random number generator. Uh, let me give you guys an example. So for example, uh, we can generate torch rand n, which is a, a normal, uh, random normal distribution, random variable. Um, for example, if we, we can generate a two by nothing random variable. Okay. If we run this uh, cell multiple times, I mean, we can even do even more. So every time we run this cell, we get different number, right? However, if we fixed If we fix the seed, for example, if we fix the seed to be one, um, we run this cell again, okay? We run, we run this cell multiple times. As we can see, if we fix the seed, no matter how many times we run this uh, uh, cell, we get the same number. Is it deterministic? It's, it's not deterministic, it is a, uh, it is still a random number following um, the normal distribution, but we make our result or say experiment reproducible. Uh, this is very, very important in machine learning because uh, uh, if we wanna write papers, if we wanna perform, for example, uh, we wanna participate in competitions and we basically, we want our result to be reproducible. Um, and it's uh, so that it's not like, uh, for example, if we use a lucky random seed and we get the result, but if we change to another seed, 
we cannot get the result, then this model is bad. For example, if we change this to two, okay, and we hit wrong again, we'll see the result is different. But no matter how many times we're wrong, we'll get the same result. All right. So this is a um, this is the um, what random seed plays the role in our experiment is we want to fix our random seed to make uh, our result reproducible. So I do want to I do have a remark. Uh, I do have a remark. My remark is uh, um, in cell mode which means, uh, um, for example, in collab. So we're not uh, in cell mode and not uh, a single uh, dot pi file, okay? Um, we have to put this torch menu seed. Uh, and this is the number of your seed, okay? Uh, in each cell, uh, we want reproducibility. All right. So, and next is in D type. Okay. Um, for example, right here, the D type is float. Uh, float means just a, a single precision uh, float. like uh, single precision float numbers. So this basically means we use float format uh, in all our computation. So we're not using double precision, uh, which is 64 bit. Uh, this is 32 bit and device is uh, CPU. So here we haven't used any accelerator. If we want to use accelerator, we can go to runtime and change runtime type, uh, we toggle this uh, GPU, okay. So now we run this cell. Um, and now we wanna implement um, this uh, uh, neural network. Uh, first one is the sample size. We suppose in the first implementation, we suppose we only have uh, one sample. So N equals basically one. And this is dimension dn is basically uh, the dimension of uh, uh, the input layer. And nh is the dimension or say the number of perceptron or number of neurons in the hidden layer. And d out is our uh, output layer. So uh, we have basically uh, 10 input and five is a hidden layer size and uh, three is the output size, okay? So now we generate a sample. So we generate a sample. Um, X is like our input and the Y is, uh, um, so we can print X. comma y, okay? Um, for example, right here, uh, what we wanna do is, this is like our input uh, and is the input vector. And this is our true output, but uh, we'll have some, uh, you know, neural network that approximates this. It. So y hat is our neural network's output. Um, so for example, we generate this, all right? So this is our input vector and this is our output vector. Um, so I do have, I do have a comment to make. In the, in the actual application, in the presentation, we all use column vectors. So for example, X is a column, is a long column vector and it multiply with a matrix and that is mathematical way of presenting this material. But in the, app, in the actual implementation, in the actual implementation, um, X, which is a sample, is a row vector, okay? So each row represents 
a sample. So this is how uh, in the in the real implementation, uh, the data is stored. That is, uh, each row represents a sample. Why this is the case is because we want to use some shorter um, like notification. So why why using row as sample? Okay. So let's try to build X. And this is uh, uh, let's do five rows and uh, uh, seven. Okay. So we have five samples, seven uh, features. So feet, number of features just means uh, uh, like uh, our input dimension. If we have that, if we print this X, so this will be our X, okay? And why we wanna use row as, oops. Why we want to use row indexing as sample is because row corresponds to axis zero, which means the first dimension. So for example, if we do X zero, okay, even though X is a matrix, X has two indices, the row index and the column index. For example, if I do X zero, so only a single subscript, okay? So this returns the uh, row zero, returns row zero, okay? So the first row. Let's try to see if it's a case. You can see it's a first row, it's right here. So let me use print. So for example, if we wanna use columns, we have to do something like this. Okay, so we have to do use column and the uh, first column. So for example, uh, we'll see this vector is the first column. Okay, so this is column zero. As we can see, it's it's not quite it's not so convenient to track column vectors. Okay, so not convenient to track column vectors. So that's why we use this a single index. Okay, single index, very handy to track the samples. So this is the reason why uh, we choose use row to represent. Uh, our samples, all right? So the other way, the other way is we can do something like this, but it's even um, more complicated. For example, we can use dot, dot, dot. So this gives us uh, the column zero as well. Okay, column zero as well. All right. But overall, if we use a single index, it's the best. So that's why we use uh, uh, rows to represent our sample. So now let's back here. So in this vector, oops. so this vector is a row vector. For example, if we print the X size, uh, we'll get, this is a one ten. This means we have one row and 10 columns. Okay, that's why we have this uh, uh, double bracket right here. So this is our uh, this is our input and this is the output we want to approximate. So now let's move on to um, implement our neural network. So what happens is uh, uh, then we wanna initialize the weights uh, because we here we have used uh, uh, above, we have used a normal distribution with mean zero. 
uh, as our sample and our target. So we don't have include any bias. Um, so right here, because our data has zero mean, our data target um, has zero mean, so there is no need to include bias, all right? And W1 is basically, uh, is right here. Uh, but here are transpose because uh, we're actually using X times W1 transpose, all right? Um, so basically this is our W1. So W1, as we can see, the first dimension is the input dimension. The second dimension is the output dimension. But uh, in the matrix multiplication, if, uh, if we use W multiply with X, actually the column, the number of column of W corresponds to the, uh, the first input dimension. So that's why I'm saying here W1, W2 here are actually transposes because if we use this type of expression, uh, it will be uh, NH and DN. But uh, because like I said, in our class, the presentation is given so that X is a column vector and W is like our regular matrix. But in the actual implementation, due to you know, some coding conveniences, uh, we, choose, we choose a row to represent uh, our data. Okay, so let's run this out. And next thing I wanna say about is this require grad. So this is a, this is a, um, so how would I say? So this is a way of uh, uh, Torch tells uh, which variables we should track. So for example, we wanna train this network, which means the weights are our variables. So we wanna modify the weight so that we can approximate uh, this Y. Uh, whenever we have this weight, for example, we have to add, when we initialize it, um, we'll add this requires grad is true. So let's print, let's print the W2. Um, for example, if we print the W2, we'll see uh, there is uh, something like uh, require grad. So for example, as we can see here, requires grad is true. But if we print uh, X and Y, we can see uh, it's just a regular, for example, it's just a regular, you know, tensor. There is no require grad. Require grad basically lets Torch to track its gradient. And we'll learn later why um, we can do that. Okay, so now let's implement the forward pass. I mean, the forward pass is a straightforward to implement. So first of all, like I said here, Z1, so Z, uh, sorry, Z2, uh, Z2 here, all right. Originally Z2 was a column vector. Here Z2 is a row vector. Okay, so Z2 is a row vector and it is a one by one by five. So, and uh, it is basically one by 10 times 10 by five matrix. So our input is then, uh, we wanna basically multiply the row vector version of X with our weight matrix. Okay. So, uh, so basically we have our X MM W1 and, uh, and let's print Z2. Uh, size. All right, so this is our Z2. And as we can see, uh, we have a grad function here. So whenever we, we multiply, we perform some operation of uh, uh, a variable that we need to compute gradient, PyTorch will track 
its gradient in this way. So this is a callback function, actually. Uh, if you are in my uh, 449 class, uh, we have learned something about callback, but uh, I don't wanna go into too detail into software engineering, but uh, this grad function here, if we see this grad function, this is uh, MM equals uh, is standing for matrix multiplication. Um, this one means we are keeping track of the gradient of this variable with respect to something uh, here that requires gradient. Okay, next one is uh, um, is ReLU. So um, is ReLU activation, which is here. So A2 equals um, V2 clamp mean equals zero. So this is how we implement re ReLU in, uh, in uh, PyTorch. We can, we can use torch clamp, but this is the best way. So, um, and let's print A2. So as we can see, um, we got a new vector right here, um, which is uh, our activation. So all these negative value got uh, cut off. Um, so, and this is our ReLU. The next one is, the next one is uh, a, a Z3. Basically, this is our output already. By the way, uh, B1 and B2 are zero. So uh, let me add this remark here. Okay. Um, So for simplicity, uh, we just use uh, um, zero mean data. So that's why the bias is at zero. All right, next is we just implement uh, Z3. And this is actually our output. We can name it uh, out equals then uh, is A2, okay? Matrix multiply with uh, W2. So let's print this output. So this is our output and it's a one by three vector. So, and uh, um, and why, like, uh, why this is handy in terms of actual implementation, it's easier to track the dimension as well. So if we look back at the initialization of the weight matrices, okay. Uh, like I said, uh, in math, we like to write anything like this. So we have a output vector, column vector, equals this weight matrix times this column vector. But however, this matrix will have the input that many columns and the output that many rows. So that's uh, the nature of a matrix vector multiplication. And this is not favorable in implementation is because like I said here, the W1 maps this vector to this vector. So it maps a one by 10 vector to a one by five ve vector, which means uh, we can keep track of its dimension. So its first dimension is um, the dimension of the previous layer. Its next second dimension is the dimension of the next layer. So it's easier to track. So same thing happens here. W2 maps a vector from hidden layer to the outer layer. So it maps something one by five to one by three. So we have its first input is five second input is three. So it's easier to track the dimension as well because we don't wanna put uh, um, in reverse direction. 
So, uh, which means W1, W2 are actually transpose of this W1 and W2, right? So, and which uh, corresponds to the actual data if we have a batch data, what do we have? So let me add, okay, so let me, let me split this one. Um, okay, so let me add a text and let me add a code here. So uh, what if we have in batch? Okay, so what if we have in batch? So this is a torch. Uh, so what if we have in batch? So let's do n equals uh, eight. So this means we have eight samples in the batch. So it means we have, uh, we have eight samples um, in our batch, which means each single one of them have dimension 10. So let's uh, try to initialize it. So we use capital X to denote this. Um, we have torch random, random n, and we have n here. And uh, um, so we have n samples, each row is a sample, and we have d in, um, and then uh, d type equals torch float, and device equals, uh, I think we initialize device, right? So, uh, so we do that. Uh, now we print x. And let's uh, fix the seed. Okay, so torch menu seed 42. Um, okay, maybe um, as we can see, this is one row. So the print is a little bit ugly, but uh, uh, this is one row and this is our second row. So it, this one represents um, our first data, our first sample. Okay, this one represents our second sample. And similarly, we add this Y vector. So capital Y is torch rand N. We have N samples and we have D out um, and D type equals torch load device equals device. All right. And uh, let's print what is Y. So let's run this again. And as we can see, this is our X, this is our Y. So for example, the last row of a Y corresponds to the last row of X. And now let's try again Y this is nicer. Why this implementation is nicer? Okay, so let's do Z1, uh, Z2, sorry. Um, so Z2 is uh, um, W1 multiplied with X, uh, with every X in this eight sample batch. And Z2 is actually X matrix multiplication with W1. Um, so as we can see here, we don't need to any, uh, you know, modification of our code. If we use column based implementation here, we'll, we have to transpose twice. So this is not favorable. And let's print what is uh, Z2 is like, okay. Um, all right, this is Z2. So as we can see, we have eight samples. Okay, eight samples. Uh, I don't know, but eight, eight samples. So we have a, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight samples and each sample. So right now this is a vector living on hidden layer. So we have five dimension. So this is a vector. So each vector is a five, one by five vector. Okay, so this is a, for example, this is a, the 
vector living on the hidden dimension, hidden layer for the first sample. And this is the second sample on the hidden layer and et cetera. Okay. So now let's uh, implement um, the activation. And like I said, if we implement it this way, it's the simplest and uh, um, we, don't, we, we don't have to change the code at all. It's just, we can just change the name of the code. For, for example, um, okay, this is our activation function, which is our ReLU function. So we, we basically, we get rid of all um, the output right here that are less than zero, all right? So, so as we can see here, every entry that is negative got uh, clamped off. And lastly, uh, we have the output, okay? The output C3. So D3 equals A2 matrix multiplication with W2. And if we print Z3, we'll find we have an output for every sample, All right? So like I said, um, this is the implementation of our forward pass, okay? And uh, um, like I said, this is the explicit implementation of our forward pass. So today we'll use a shortcut, all right? Which is, uh, we use torches NM module. Um, by the way, um, the NM module has a direct implementation of what we just implement right here. So for example, uh, so we can, uh, we can click this. Um, this is basically PyTorch's uh, uh, document, all right? So this is a torch NM module. It's, even though it says, uh, these are some building blocks for graphs, but uh, uh, ignore this term graph. It's, uh, it's basically, this is our building block. This is like our Lego block of uh, uh, building a neural network, okay? Um, so right now the hottest one will be transformer. Uh, Transformer is currently state of art model for neural network. Uh, it's very cool. So if we have time, we may uh, we may have, you know. So uh, I'll share some code of this uh, transformer. Um, today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do linear. All right. So uh, linear layer is basically this is what we have just went through. So the A is like our uh, the weight, and we take the weight transpose, we multiply with the sample, all right? So uh, it's basically this. So now if we wanna implement what we have just implemented, uh, we can do this is a uh, uh, layer from layer. So basically from layer one to layer two is a linear, so 10, Five. All right. So basically this transform a 10, one vector to a uh, five, one vector or X W transpose transforms a one 10 vector. Okay. To a one five vector. And then layer two, our layer two is NN linear um, five, three. Okay. So, I mean, this is, uh, this is like, uh, we're playing Lego now. So for example, right now I can do, for example, this X, all right. X is our batch, right? So X's size is is eight by 10. We have eight samples and each of the samples have, has 10 features. And now what happens is if we apply, so for example, 
we apply Z two. So I'm using Z two again. Uh, I'm using capital Z two. So Z two is layer one. If we apply layer one on this X, and let's print Z two. Oh, layer one not defined. My bad. I haven't defined this. Okay, here we go. Uh, we have a, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually the same. You, you see, we have an eight by five matrix. So this is our first layer. All right. And then what happens is we can do, we can introduce a new. So for example, we can introduce an activation equals NN. It actually has a ReLU function. So for example, ReLU, okay. Now we hit it wrong. And then uh, A2 equals, um, so A2 equals um, Z2 uh, activation uh, Z2. Okay. So if we print um, A2, uh, we'll have uh, we'll have that one. Okay. So here I'm gonna skip the third one. Here I'm gonna define. So in every neural network, you guys gonna see this function define forward. All right. Um, we basically we define the forward. Uh, X, and we'll see every function, every neural network. Uh, later, later in our coding class, we'll learn like a, a neural network class. But right now, every class has this forward function. So how this is forward pass function? Okay, this is forward pass function. So how do we define it? We basically. Uh, so for example, the forward pass function needs several layers. Um, for example, our layer one is NN linear 10, five, and our layer two is NN linear uh, five, three, and our activation is just NN ReLU, and you can choose other, uh, we, we simply, we can choose other functions. And then the forward pass is nothing but an X. So here I'm, I'm gonna use X or through, and this is the coding style of PyTorch. So X equals layer one of X. So basically if X is originally a one by 10 vector, then it got transformed to a one by five vector. And then uh, we activate X, so, all right. And then, so right now this is like, uh, this is actually Z2. And this is actually A2. And then X is going through layer two. And this is actually Z3. And then we return this X. So this is how we implement. This is the PyTorch style of implement uh, implementation of a forward pass. And if we run this, all right. So for example, we can run this file. So for example, output equals forward of our X and let's print the output, uh, output. Okay, so this is our output. We have this is output is uh, our X, keep this in mind, our X has eight samples and we have eight output. So one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and each output is a, uh, uh, is a one by three vector because our output uh, um, has uh, three perceptrons. So the last part of today, I wanna show you guys uh, what uh, taking grad is like uh, in uh, PyTorch. Okay. And first I wanna, uh, I wanna say PyTorch has a, has a sub, this module called autograd. Why we want to handle this required grad true is we want to use the auto grad to help us to compute uh, the gradient. So for example, right here, we see um, 
x is a is a like a two by nothing tensor. It's two and three, right? B is a tensor of uh, six and four. So we run this cell. And if we run this Q, it's basically, first of all, uh, this is element-wise uh, vectorized uh, implementation. So if we print what is Q, Q will be a two by nothing uh, vector. So we print Q. So as we can see here is minus 12 and 65. Um, for example, why this is the case is because uh, we first we take uh, two cube, okay. Um, okay. Uh, so we have a question. We have a very nice question in the chat. So um, such as the softmax function or sigmoid function, the answer is yes for specific tasks. For example, right now uh, we're doing a regression problem, but later on for our final project, when we are doing classification problem, we have to use the softmax function, but th that's another story. So right now um, we're still like learning to walk and uh, we'll, we'll see that in next week actually, and in homework too as well. So, um, but thanks for the question. Um, so for example, right here, this is, uh, uh, a cube, which is two cubed, and then multiply with three. So we have 24, then subtract 36. We got this minus uh, 12. And then for this one, we have, this is a three. We take a cube, we get 27 and multiply three, we get 81, 81 subtract four we get 65. Okay, so this is, uh, this is basically uh, what's Q. Q is an element-wise difference between these two numbers. And now we just take the sum of Q. Okay, and let's print what is L. All right. So keep this in mind. We all have this, uh, uh, for example, we have this a sub backward zero. We have this a sum backward zero. The sub backward zero is because we have a subtraction here. This is like the last operation Q experienced. And, uh, um, and now we have this L, which is a 53, the sum of it. How do we do backward propagation is, is this simple command, okay? We do L backward. So this is backprop in a simple command. If we run this, we'll be able to compute. So we'll be able to compute uh, these two. So for example, uh, so we can compute this is partial L partial A, all right. So we'll be able to compute this. So first of all, uh, this, is, this should be a vector. So L is a, L is a scalar. So L scalar take derivative of a vector. This should be the same shape with A. So uh, should be the same shape with with the vector a. All right, and what's a? A is two by nothing vector. So let's print a here. So this is our a, and now let's uh, uh, let's compute it. So how do we compute the gradient of a? Is this simple command? Okay, so if A is a grad, then the gradient is a, a method associated with A. So this one will return a vector that's a gradient of A. Let's see if it's a case, okay? So this is 36 and this is 81. And uh, if we look at this, okay, because this is element wise, um, the gradient of uh, A should be basically uh, nine times A 
square, right? I mean, we take derivative of a 3a cubed, we get 9a square, and you see, it's the same. So, but uh, I, I don't want to do this. So let me, let me, I don't want to mess up with the graph. Let me detach it. So if we do detach, it means we don't track this uh, uh, derivative. So as we can see, so detach means, uh, detach means uh, we do not track the, the gradient. Okay. So similar things happens when we have B grad. So this is B grad, okay. And B grad should be uh, negative two B, right? So negative two times B and, but we don't wanna track the gra gradient for this. So uh, detach, we do this. So they're the same. So as we can see, so this is uh, the power of this command. So in PyTorch, this is called autograd. And in next coding lecture, we're gonna learn how do we apply this autograd in a neural network. So that's it for today. And I'll stop recording. If you have uh, some simple short question, you can uh, stay here and ask.